Hello and welcome to Data Research Labs. For this tutorial, we'll do a brief overview of our SQL Server Data Dictionary Generator. To download this free tool, click the GitHub link in the comments below at any time, or watch the follow-up video on how to download and deploy. First up, a quick graphical overview of the tool. You start out with SQL Server, and then you run the Data Dictionary, point it at SQL Server, choose a schema, make some selections, and then you ultimately have output that's generated, the data dictionary, either to an interactive viewer, basically a data grid on screen that you can sort and filter and scroll through, or an extract to CSV that you can view in Excel or Notepad, or finally a PDF report that looks real pretty that you can view the output data dictionary in. Now, there's also bonus output. Two different scripts can be generated from the data dictionary tool. A comments script that generates the or updates or creates the comments for all of your tables and columns and views. And I would recommend generating this and putting it in source control. And then you can go update the comments easily in the future. Alternatively, the data dictionary script that's run behind the scenes by this tool, that script is generated as well if you want to use it for test automation or any other development purpose. So two different handy scripts can be generated in addition to all the different output flavors of the data dictionary. So how do I use this tool? Well, step one is you configure the SQL Server connection select the server, select the user ID, login, password, all that good stuff. Step two, select the database, one schema, and the tables that you want to analyze for the data dictionary. Step three, select some options, and step four, select the output, and then finally you run the job and repeat. When you open the application, it starts at step one of four in the wizard layout. Quick tip before we get started, you can click any of these little help icons and they'll pop up help that's context sensitive to whatever box or control that it's sitting next to. Okay, so let's get started. At step one, you're gonna enter the SQL Server connection information. So you're gonna enter the server name. You're gonna have to go out and copy that from SQL Server. Go to SQL Server Management Studio and browse and grab it from there. Here, so I'm gonna copy that local version from my laptop, I'm gonna paste that in. Now I could use SQL authentication, type in a name and a password, but I'm gonna use Windows authentication. And I can click Test Connection. don't have to, but I will. And yay, it connected successfully. And when you're done, you click Next to move on to the next step. It takes a little bit. And voila, it actually tested the connection before it came over here. And not only did it test the connection, it loaded the database dropdown with all of the uh, databases available to my login credentials. So as we just saw, the database dropdown is populated, and I'm going to go ahead and to select the adventure works and then I have a choice I could go with the default and select all tables and I know there's like 20 tables in here so I'll go with that but at a company I recently worked at a healthcare survey company they had thousands of tables and I don't remember the exact nomenclature for the tables but there was like three quarters of the tables I did not want to see in a data dictionary. They're the same thing repeated over and over, and they're basically like a temp table. So let's just say they were a temp table. Let's say they were prefixed with the word temp. So you can just do that. So uh, actually show me all tables not like temp and then the wildcard character percent. So any table that starts with temp, I won't see it. Or I could put a wildcard in front, and then any table that has the word temp anywhere in it would not be shown. But that's a little bit risky. You got to be careful with that. So that's the not like operator, the like operator, got to click it. And I can only choose one of them, whichever one the radio button's on is what goes. And over here again is your context sensitive help that'll explain the wild cards and how you can use brackets for ranges of characters, et cetera. Uh, and then there's a table list as well. If you only have 75 to 100 tables you want to pick, don't, don't do more than that. But anyway, you could select this option, click the triple dot, it's going to go out, load a list of all the tables. There, it has all the tables. I can click them one by one. I can clear them all. I can select them all and then unclick a few, etc. And when I'm done, I hit OK, and boom, it puts the list down there. But I'm going to go back and do all tables. And when I'm done, I click Next. Oh, and note, you can go back, back all the way to the beginning, Next, Next. I can't, uh, and then I could even click these, and I can, it won't let me jump. It's going to go to step two and then to step three, and as long as this is filled out, I can keep skipping forward. Moving along to step three, where we have a couple of options, and basically, 
The top three options determine whether or not in the data dictionary to show tables, to show views, and to show keys. Foreign key, primary key, unique key. This is just a column. Show or hide the values. And these are rows. Show the data dictionary for the tables and all the columns in it or the views. With that, we're going to click Next to go to the final step. So there's a lot going on here. It's a busy screen with a lot of options. And I'm going to do multiple other videos on how to exercise all these options. But briefly, you have two categories of options. You have output a data dictionary, table, column, views, and what all the descriptions are. So you have that. And then you have generating SQL scripts. If you want to generate a comment script, you do and run this. If you want to generate the data dictionary script that actually produces all this data, you do this, click this button, run job, and get the script. But what we really want to look at is uh, the interactive screen. CSV output or PDF output. So let's go look at the interactive screen, click Run Job. It's going to run through. Boom, there it is. There's the interactive screen with the table, username, the object is a table or a view, the ordinal position. Uh, zero isn't really a column, it's just a table description. One is column one, address ID, column two, address, blah, blah, blah. And then there's all the uh, descriptions over here. Make it wider. And whether or not it's nullable, the data type, etc. And it's alphabetically sorted by table name and then ordinal position. There's the keys, etc. And in one of the other videos, we'll go through all the different stuff that you can do with filtering and sorting. It's native to access. But there is your data dictionary viewer. I'm looking at SQL Server. I'm looking at that database. It'll never show you the password. It'll get asterisked out. And this one's trusted connection. But anyway, your connection information up top. I could click to PDF, it'll run, it'll generate a PDF, and the PDF looks something like that. Looks pretty nice. Scroll through it. Air log, product, my columns in ordinal position, descriptions, etc. Close that. So that's PDF. I could pop it up to Notepad. It's a CSV, so there you go. Data dictionary and CSV. Or I could do a CSV but open it in Excel. When I click that button, it's, on, it's popping up on my other screen. That's why I'm dragging it. But there you go, Data Dictionary in Excel. And I will close that. And really briefly, if I want to pop it out to CSV, I just do that option, click Run Job. It's going to run through. And there it is, pops it up in Excel. And it would do the same thing with PDF. And before we wrap up this quick overview, uh, there's an Exit button. You click it to close the app. And there's an About button. In the About button, Sure, you could go view the YouTube videos. You could go GitHub and get the source code, get to download the executable, et cetera. And there is an event log button. So you click that, and it's going to say there's no file, there's no error log. But if there was an error log, it would pop up in Notepad, and you could see the details of what's going on, and it helps tr troubleshoot issues. And this is a Creative Commons zero license. You can do whatever you want with it. Thank you for watching. And if you found this video helpful, then please smash that like button and subscribe for more related content. Also, check out our other related videos and playlists in the boxes to the left.